al BIM, un convegno internazionale, presente qui oggi anche Idar Kinko, della CEO della Via Nova Systems, e con lui abbiamo Paolo eh, Sattamino, che invece è il direttore commerciale del settore BIM Infrastrutture di Arpaceas. Gli rivolgiamo alcune do domande, sentiamo le domande di Paolo Sattamino. Ok, grazie. Thank you, Idar. Thank you for coming to Italy. Thank you. We have some questions for you. Yes. First is, uh, who is Vianova Systems? Well, Vianova Systems, we are a Norwegian-based uh, company, but we have companies in uh, all of Nordics. Uh, we do software for uh, infrastructure, both road and rail and uh, water and sewer. And uh, um, it's both the design software, often called, called in English the authoring tools, to do the modeling, but also the collaboration tools, the model-based uh, collaboration tool, we call it QuadriDCM. So that is uh, what we do. Okay, thank you. Second question, uh, what is in your opinion the status of the use of the BIM in the infrastructure and the road? Well, as we see it, uh, we, we, we think we come from a region in uh, the world where it has come quite far. Uh, I think it's uh, commonly um, agreed on in the Nordics that uh, Norway has come uh, the, fir the farthest and then um, uh, Sweden, Finland and uh, Denmark. And if you look, uh, if, well, we, uh, while we are traveling around, we, we, we don't see, we see signaling projects, singular projects that are very good. But we don't see the, the, the broadness in the, in, the, in the business. So we think there are a lot to, to do okay. to uh, translate uh, from uh, traditional drawing oriented uh, methodology to BIM. Okay, thank you. Third question is uh, can you mention to us uh, a, re a recent real case where the use of the BIM has allowed uh, uh, cost savings in terms of uh, economics, uh, yes. point of view, organization, and other things? Yes, we have actually in Norway done a study. Uh, the study was uh, finalized in 2012 uh, based on projects that were uh, designed and built fi and finalized during 2006 to uh, 2012. And what we saw was, uh, well, not that many projects, but around uh, six projects, two that were, uh, some that were traditional and some that were using uh, BIM. And we saw, uh, together with the National uh, Public Road Authorities, we found a clear evidence that the, the BIM projects were substantially lower costs um, and, and then they looked at all the costs that uh, come uh, on top of the actual contract. So it were, they were able to lower it from a, a, an average of 19% to an average of 7.5, which is a substantial uh, saving. Okay, good. Thank you. And the last question is, uh, uh, can you say to us what uh, particularly the, uh, the Norwegian government is doing to promote the BIM inside this country? Uh, we can divide it, I think, in the building industry where you have uh, Statsbygg and, uh, and the infrastructure where you have the strong road authorities and also railway. And uh, Statsbygg, they have been very offensive when it comes to using BIM and implementing BIM, uh, both uh, yeah, throughout the country. I think they are maybe second in the world uh, after UK uh, and pushing BIM very hard when it comes to, uh, to building. Uh, it also even affects us uh, because they want to have IFC of the roads around the buildings and, uh, and also geotechnical uh, information in the IFC uh, format. So that's a good thing. Uh, so they're doing a lot. And uh, when it comes to the road and rail, they have first and foremost, they introduced a regulative in uh, 2012, December 2012, uh, actually almost at the same time, both for road and for rail even though they are separate organizations, uh, where uh, they are demanding or actually introducing the demand of 3D and BIM, uh, both for describing the existing situation model and also the new situation. Okay. So, uh, and and uh, the focus is still there, and when we have uh, the, the t a top level of road and rail talking, they are mentioning BIM and 3D modeling as an important tool and in, an important um, methodology to do uh, better projects. Okay.